visitors from all over Australia are attracted to the sanctuary at Badger Creek, Healesville in southeastern Victoria, where a young scientist, Mr. David Flay, has the greatest collection of Australian native birds and animals in natural surroundings. The sanctuary is named after a famous professor of anatomy and lover of our native fauna, the late Sir Colin Mackenzie. Running through it is Badger Creek, so named by early settlers who thought the wombat was a badger. Second largest living bird, the emu. They roam around, eating anything from beer bottle tops to stones, and take visitors' lunches if they can. After laying the eggs, the mother just strolls away and does nothing else but feed, boom, and show off. The father emu is really the mother, that is to say he incubates the eggs for two months and then looks after the chicks. Emu eggs weigh about a pound and a half, and a really big one is equivalent to about a dozen hen eggs. After Dad's been sitting on them for two months, developing corns on his breastbone, while Mum goes to the pictures and the bridge club, his little football team arrives. And you like their striped jerseys? Dad mounts guard at the ready until the team takes the field. Dinner is now served, and the diners are mostly wallabies, which are a sort of junior kangaroo. The black-tailed wallaby is common in the hills and fern gullies of Victorian bush country. These kangaroos are the females of the grey and the black-faced species. Parry wallabies from Queensland are exceptionally speedy, and having very long tails are sometimes called long tails. More commonly, they are known as pretty faces and are our loveliest wallabies. <laughs> it certainly must have been lunchtime. Small wallabies, not much larger than hares, are grouped under the name of paddy melons. One seen here has a baby half as big as itself. And getting home is such a tight squeeze that a shoehorn seems indicated. Ah, made it. Though grass eaters in the wild state, Kangaroos and wallabies reared in a fauna reserve develop a great liking for sweets, chocolate, biscuits and peanuts. No, no more. Joey wallabies and kangaroos are only about half an inch long when first born and after entering the pouch spend up to six months in its shelter. friends together, and very much at home among friends in this perfect natural setting are two very interesting corroboree birds. Brolgers, or native companions, are large Australian cranes that dance very cleverly. On the swamps and plains, they indulge in this dance sometimes in large parties of 20 or 30. They throw sticks in the air, bow and scrape to one another, and occasionally fly to great heights. The Brolgers dance is both stately and grotesque. And strange to say, not one Australian in 10,000 has ever seen it. Now for the pride and the pets of the sanctuary, in fact the best loved animal in Australia, our koala or native bear. There are 50 of his tribe in the Sir Colin Mackenzie sanctuary and they live in their own beloved gardens. The koala is also only about half an inch long when born and spends four months in mother's pouch. Ah, this Joey is starting to get about a bit. Hold on, Junior. Mother's just going to have a nibble of afternoon tea. This is venison on the hoof. Strictly speaking, they're intruders into the sanctuary because Australia has no native deer. Only the descendants of imported fallow deer and samba, hog deer, and even axis deer from Japan, long before Japan knew there was an axis. In some parts of Victoria, they are a pest, and there is no closed season anywhere for them. But here, they are privileged and protected pets.
there's a bird at every zoo called a pelican, whose bill holds more than its... Yes, you know the rest of the rhyme. Steamboat Bill and Tugboat Annie on naval manoeuvres. Waterfowl seem to know that no artillery is allowed, and when they arrive, they often send out telegrams to invite their friends, and their friends' friends, too. Black swans, ibis, spoonbills, and coots, such as inspired C.J. Dennis, our great bush poet, to write fellows of Australia, blokes and coves and coots. Here's a rare magpie goose doing a stretch. And these handsome mountain ducks. And the cassowary, which is a sort of Australian ostrich, but otherwise like nothing on earth. Note its fairy feet and crash helmet. The Tasmanian devil carries four babies in its pouch and likes its mutton alive. It's an amazing marsupial and smells just as strong as it looks. May we now introduce Jill, the smaller of the two platypuses in the sanctuary, at her afternoon show. Being nocturnal and highly temperamental, platypuses cannot be shown with safety to themselves more than once a day. Jack and Jill have put up a world's record aggregate partnership of eight and a half years. Their consumption of earthworms has run into millions, while the count of tadpoles and yabbies is incomplete, and likely to remain so. This is the platypus's first cousin, commonly but incorrectly called a porcupine. It's really the spiny anteater, and it has a well-developed pouch, which is not the case in its egg-laying cousin, the platypus. Hey, stop picking at him, you fellas. <laughs> Nothing puts an emu off. Not even a spiny anteater's spines. Yeah, he's a real Australian digger. This is not Myrtle the turtle, but Tom the long-necked river tortoise. In swamp or billabong, he loves hot, sizzling days. The white-breasted sea eagle is the handsomest of his kind. Horatius, a very large, wedge-tailed eagle, has been trained in the ancient sport of falconry. He's over seven feet across the wings, and he can be safely released to fly after rabbits in the paddocks without fear of losing him. His aerial antics, including power dives, rolls, and loops, are a sight to behold. Said to be the only fetch and carry eagle in captivity. These are the heavyweight champions of bushland, the woeful wombat whom nobody loves. Bob the dingo, or wild dog, comes from the Gulf country of northern Queensland. And here's another famous Queenslander, the brush or mound building turkey. Cockbirds scratch up huge mounds weighing tons measuring over six feet in height and 16 feet in diameter. The hen bird lays the eggs in this natural incubator, and father regularly tests the mound for internal temperature. Mr. Brush Turkey, like the emu and cassowary, is one of nature's gentlemen, and does all his wife's work as well as his own. 